me they long hello everyone how are you doing a little bit early yeah i know <laughs> but it is thursday and uh actually i guess in my mind it could be friday but uh yeah anyway how you doing good to see you, everyone so happy to have you here hello lois how are you warrior queen hello ellen good to see you so, how's it going? Hello, Sherry, Stephen, Sovereign, good to see you. Sean, peace, Wendy, hello. Beautiful day, you know? Just sometimes it's just good just to live in the moment, you know? Have that stoic approach to life. Accept my portion. That's what that means. Uh, hello, Electric Tragedy. How are you doing? Interesting name. Richard, good to see you. Hello, Maria Truthseeker. How are you doing? Lisa, hello. Um, wow, comment one. Peace, how are you? So, yes, the title. Uh, let's see. Horace, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Well, thank you. You know, every time we even vote in favor upon each other, Man, and I'll just invoke favor upon all of us right now. Overflowing, you know, the kind that, man, you just can't keep it all in. Just, you got to give it and let it go. That type of favor, prosperity and full restoration, nothing missing, nothing broken, be found in our lives. So, got a good one today, folks. This is one, uh, hello, Delina. I just want to say hello to everyone. Lori, good to see you, my dear. And again, Sherry, 167. Nanny, is that uh, Nanny Brandy? <laughs> hello, how are you? It's good to see y'all. Um, Emperor Rex, Namaset. Ryan, good to see you. Uh, Lori, I'll receive that and take more of it. You know? <clears throat> Great day. Julie, thank you for the tea. Sending some out. So, death. I mean, everyone thinks about it. You know, it's the older you get, the more you do. Great thing about youth is that death is a concept that seems so far away that, you know, you don't think about it. Why should you? You're young. Uh, but we all know that it plays a role at no matter what age. And the thing that all of us seek, I know some people say, oh, I've already got the answer. Well, that's okay. I don't know about that. But is like, well, what is it really going to be like on the other side? Uh, I saw a comment right before we went live and talking about um, hell. Hell's a made-up concept. It doesn't exist, folks. Uh, there is a video that all you have to do is type in in YouTube. Hell is not real, and you'll see Father, um, and I forget his name, Ryan, I think, but don't quote me on that. It's the infamous um, interview that he did with uh, NBC. And as he will tell you, and everyone knows this, most people in the ministry that went to Bible college and, you know, really study this, they know this. There is a story about a particular Baptist seminary where the dean of the school went up on the first day of school. And as all the new recruits were coming in and uh, anxious to get their ministry started, what he did is he took the Bible, he looked at it, and ripped it apart and threw it behind him. He says, now you know the truth. Go and start studying. The point is, folks, there is no hell. It's a made-up construct. It doesn't exist. Is there good and evil? Yes. 
But is there a place where there's a congregation of evil? You got to think about this concept, folks. Listen, if there is one righteous one, right, that uh, this is the judgment for all the bad, right? I'll tell you why when you study this, you realize it doesn't exist because the guards, the, the, the chief kahuna that would be down there, right? And, you know, we can study Egyptian lore as far as back as you got. The concept has been with man, but that's because it's been indoctrinated into us. So getting back to it, so the chief kahuna that would be running the place, hell, is actually an agent of the guy sitting supposedly on the throne. Think about that. Why would a demon torment you? How could a demon torment you? But more importantly, why? I mean, you're down there taking the construct. So is it. No, 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 no. Intelligence, if it exists, would never exist in hell. It couldn't. Because intelligence would defeat it, overcome it, change it. Same thing with heaven. The concept most people have of heaven is so limited. They can't tell you anything about what you're going to do. They can't tell you anything about what the purpose is. And, you know, beyond the ambiguities of the imagination is where it lies. And some people get pissed off. I could care less. When you die, and baby, you are going to die, it's something we all do. We cannot escape it. It is the inevitable conclusion of all of us. Philosophers, from the beginning of when philosophy was first birthed, have contemplated this. It's why we made up the gods. Olympus, Zeus, the same thing for the Christian God, the same thing for the Islam. Uh, it's all a construct of a yet some supposed future time. In the meantime, the insanity continues. You know, uh, I've been doing some research with another person on paranormal, the the hard physical evidence where uh, you know, as I say, it shouldn't be paranormal at all. It should be very normal. Death is a normal process. That when we have more and more evidence now that there is a kinetic force of some kind out there, all different kinds, they exist. We capture it. We know the physical evidence. So it's no longer a mystery. Is there something? No, there is. The question is what? Now, I'm working on an interview right now um, with a doctor that we're going to be talking about and some of his breakthrough research. And the research that he shows, modern science, baby, it's not what any of us have been thinking. The evidence shows, unless you're completely decapitated, some sort of blunt force trauma that um, literally severs the spinal cord, um, we live the horror of knowing we're dying. All evidence points to now that even after the heart stops, the body that rigor mortis is already setting in, you are still alive. Your brain is still firing off energy, electrical impulses, which clearly say, now they, they went back, and we'll, we'll look at this story, but just to give you a pretext to what we're talking about, they interviewed thousands and thousands of people. The myth of this blue light, white light, don't exist, baby. At least 
the evidence that's being shown. But we know why it happens. And this is the weird thing. I'll just tell you a little, add in a little bit more to this as we get into this. It's that because, are you ready for this? Our consciousness, you, Lisa, I'm talking to you right now. So Lisa, you pay attention. You're in the chat room. I'm talking to the energy that is basically encased in the biological form that has been given the name Lisa. See where this is going? Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Blessings to you, my friend. So Lisa, when you die, and I don't know how it's going to happen, but when that moment comes, all evidence suggests you're going to be in that place where the prism, the walls come coming in, and the reason why apparently this bright light is there is that your universe is collapsing around you. And what you're seeing is the synaptic pathways, these, the very ends. Now, what happens after that? Who knows? We know that there is a physical weight loss when we die. I think it's about 27 grams. A lot to consider here. So I had someone send this to me. Oh, I think about a week or so ago. I want to say thank you. Um, when I see these kind of things uh, that are very relative in what you and I are, listen, let's be honest with one another. That's why we're here, to be intellectually honest. We all want to know what to expect. I, I think you can prepare. I think you should be prepared. I think you should be cognitive of what's happening. And when the process starts, you know that you're now about to transcend. I did a video recently, um, been a while, and um, it's relevant. I think we ought to, before we get into exactly the Carter illusion, when that moment hits us, we are energy. And I still contend that we are sparks of eternal light. I, I, maybe it's infinite. Eternal defines a beginning and a potential end. So infinity just means there is no beginning, no end. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know if this is required as we can, and I don't know if it's really ascending. I, maybe it's just nothing more than transcending from one level of consciousness to another, each consciousness having its own dimension. I was meditating on this this morning as I, I, I quite often, because this is a subject that is important to me. We don't remember our birth. And I was talking to my wife about this last night, and she's a nurse. And she can describe to you as women, if you've given birth, you know very well yourselves. Us guys, we can only watch. Um, there's something... If consciousness exists, if consciousness is transmuted from one plane to the next, then by that statement, you and I were conscious during the birth process. It had to be hell, folks. Think about this from a conscious. Now, pain, James, as we discovered, and as we have talked about, his whole point that consciousness was learned. It's not innate. 
I disagree. I, I, I believe that consciousness exists. If, if consciousness doesn't exist, then this is all temporary, baby. And when you go out, it's blackness, nothing. You don't remember. Nothing will be remembered about you because you will not exist. Your energy is this merely dissipated and absorbed into the fabric of what we call the universe. But if consciousness is given in the womb, think about that one, then think about the pain, the horror. You may not know anything other than that the fact that you are. But what your body is about to experience, <clears throat> baby, you'll never experience anything like that. Stop and think, folks. It had to be one of the most hellacious, I mean, birth, birth, even C-sections, <clears throat> it's still taken out, but going through the birthing canal, wow, can you imagine that, folks? You women know the contractions. Once the head is breached. Folks, I mean, I think we've looked at this all wrong. I think that this is simply the death process. If you go and you take all the origins and all the stories and you begin to homogenize them, <clears throat> it shows something happens. Two shall create one. Question is, is there a soul? Is there consciousness here? <clears throat> we know, we see those in the womb, they kick, they seem to laugh, they seem to have moods. You mothers, you know this. We know that even in the womb, consciousness responds to music, frequency. Is there consciousness here? If there is, then the act of birth in itself, wow. I mean, it almost makes me want to pee in my pants think about this right now. An actor instance of being born, the actor process of bearing or bringing forth offspring, childbirth. Hmm lineage, extractions, any coming into existence, origin, beginning, the archaic something that is born. This is not life. It can't be. The process coming in and going out isn't a pleasant one, apparently, either end. Is there consciousness here? Is soul a conscious? Is consciousness the soul? From the medical point of view, the emergence and separation of offspring from the body of the mother, the act or process of bearing young, the circumstance or conditions relating to this event as its time and location. What? Time of birth. You get that exact moment. Time of death, you get that exact moment. 
Again, origin, extraction. What a word. You're literally being extracted out. What is consciousness doing at this point? Maybe why we don't remember. It becomes the thought, extraction, the act of extracting or condition of being extracted. We take so much for granted, or we assume that we know, but birth is painful. And if you look at this in a logical, linear fashion, birth is the beginning of death. Now, that's a weird freaking thing. The clock starts immediately, baby. Now, I want to know, does the clock start at consciousness? Something sure happens. Origin, something from which anything arises or is derived. The source, the fountainhead. The first stage of existence. I love it. Now, this is problematic. It defines a set process, the first stage of existence. By that, there is no thing before first. A primary source, the beginning of something the first stage or part. Wow. So the question that has to be asked, why be born only to die? It's nuts. And in the interim between the beginning to the exit point, you're bounced around like a freaking pinball. Seeing how many points you can rack up for yourself or how many are going to be taken away. I mean, it's just freaking crazy. I wanted to bring this in. Medically, origin is defined the point at which something comes into existence or from which it derives or is derived. The fact of originating. The starting point of a cranial or spinal nerve. Mathematically, it's defined the point at which the axis of the Crestarian coordinated system intersects. X, Y, Z gives you point zero, zero, zero. Remember Star Trek, the board coming in here? Now, it says in three dimensions, but here is the illusion you and I live in. There's not three dimensions. We do not live in a three-dimensional world. We live in a four-dimensional world. Time is relevant. Time is the fourth dimension. We are literally immersed in, if you take it by the way it's constructed, we're immersed into this dimension, this fourth dimension called time, and it immerses other dimensions with it. Or as I contend, is death actually life? It's a gauntlet to run through this thing down here. If, you're, if you make it to be into old age, anyone over 55, you're a senior citizen. I don't know what happens, what's beyond senior citizen, but anyway. I contend that this is not life. This is death, and this is going to tie in perfectly to the Cotter illusion, delusion. I think these people may be on to something. Death, what is the death? How is it defined? The act of dying. It's an act. The end of life. No, I think we have to redefine that, but anyway, this is how it's defined. The total and permanent sensation of all the vital functions of an organism. The state of being dead. It is a state. 
a state of consciousness, a state of being. Did you get it? It's a state of being. Dead, death, life. Deceased, demise, passing, departure. Departure to what? Into what? Do we go to another dimension that now is added to the four that we've already been through? Is that how it works? You have to travail through each dimension? The end of life of an organism or cell. In humans and animals, death is manifested by the permanent sensation of vital organic functions, including the absence of heartbeat, spontaneous breathing, and brain activity. And this last part, we're redefining death. We're going to have to. Next week, I'm going to be talking about the coming death boom. Yeah, there is a tsunami of death coming, but not what you know, it's not this God bullshit, you know, Armageddon crap. No, it's very much organic. So if death is a fourth source spirit, then that implies it is alive. Death is a state of being. We may have this all wrong, too. So if birth starts the death process, could it be that we have been wrong? The beginning actually starts at the end? Or is this merely a migration through? Could it be that birth is actually the start? That actually it's death is the start, not birth? So, this leads me into, excuse me, when we begin to look at this whole process, we see movies today on zombies, the living dead. Um, mankind is replete with stories, vampires. Uh, we did a whole reading on Lilith, you know? Incubuses, succubuses, <laughs> you know, demons, uh, you know, archons, gods, gods. I keep on saying, where is it written that man has to accept a god? I don't get it. But, so, back in... Garen, I would happen to agree with you. Love never does die. I think it's how you approach this. Listen, you know, I have been preparing myself for that moment. Now, inside, I'm a warrior. I will fight you. And I often question is that now I'm a man of love. But I also have seen so much of the dichotomy of what this life here. It seems like peace is only available when force is behind it. It's sad, but this is the way it seems to be. Um, now, there is a condition... And I thought this one was really odd. Could you imagine going through life absolutely convinced that you were dead? It, it begs this whole question, then, what is consciousness? How is consciousness perceived? So it's called the Gardner syndrome, walking corpse syndrome. Man, this is, I, I don't know how someone can exist like this. It's a mental illness in which patients think they are dead. They feel their organs are rotting. Also, they say they do not exist or cannot die because they are already dead. Wow. 
The illness is named after Julius Cotard, a French neurologist, and was first to recognize it as an entity. And as you describe, negation delire of Paris in 1880. Cardard at start described the case of a patient whom he gave her the nickname Mademoiselle X, who denied the existence of superior beings, God and the devil, and various parts of her body. She thought she was eternally sentenced and couldn't have a natural death. Wow. I've read a lot, but when I started looking into this, wow. So no superior beings, various parts of her body were rotting, and she felt that no matter, she could not die a natural death. I mean, that is a place I don't think I'd like to be. Now, here are some of the symptoms, because you know what? This is becoming, wow. All right, thank you for the high-pitched sound on that one. Um, more common, depression, suicidal thoughts, belief that there is no body. It's a delirium the patient believes to be living in some form is given when only it's their imagination. Belief that they are running out of blood. Negative thoughts, well, <laughs> that just put the whole human race in that one. Belief, they're already dead. Hmm. They can even smell them, them themselves rotting. Belief that worms are under their skin. Believe that they are immortal believe they are rotting, that they have no eternal internal organs, um, and um, apparently have no pain and into self-mutilation. I don't know about that. That's, that's awfully broad, but um, these are patients who have suffered brain injury after an accident. It is related to schizophrenia, depression, and bipolar psychiatric disorder. They are convinced that they have been to hell or heaven and indicate that this or that was a disease. But any errors are returned to inhabit their bodies. Wow. The cause of the disease is still unknown, however, it is said to occur due to lack of connection between the brain areas that recognize faces and error areas that the emotions associated with that recognition. I stopped and thought about this when I read this and I went, that would drive you freaking nuts. Any sane person, and insane, insanity, sanity, is a, a fine line. But imagine this. You couldn't recognize anyone's face. And you know, there is a, an emotional reaction. We all have two faces. When we fall in love, your children, an actress, actor, musician, politician, preacher, I mean, and then you assign an emotion to your imagination to that face. Invoke it immediately. Boy, isn't that the word invoke? They say treatment is difficult, and antidepressant drugs have shown little effect. Treatment with antidepressants, however, is a potential viable option. Now, listen to this, folks, that may be effective in combination with mechanisms such as electroconvulsive therapy. You stop and think about this. All of us are but one shock treatment away 
from a different personality. I mean, we know this. We know about electricity on the brain really well, folks. Do any research on shock, electroshock therapy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But the odd thing is, as cruel as it seems, it does work. Doctors in the field will tell you, you can actually change a person's personality. Eliminate natural tendencies. <laughs> this is an actual patient that suffers from this disorder. I don't know what else to really call it. The living dead? Probably, I would think so. So it gets one to think, uh, well, okay, if that happens, well, hmm, what causes that? I mean, it, it's becoming more and more. So I went out and did a just some brief looking at different stories. Um, this is frightening. This is all I can say. This is how Mademoiselle Eck came to believe she was a zombie. Uh, patients with the uh, Carter delusion often deny either their own existence or the existence of the different parts of her body. We've read that. Um, it's, it's weird. Uh, I don't, when you read this, it's something that has been around. I, I can't relate to this. It's, it's difficult for me to think how a person walks around the living, and they're living, but they're convinced they're not living. A lot is on about this. Um, the walking corpse syndrome. I mean, look at these anxieties, the symptoms, anxiety, hallucinations, uh, hypochondria, guilt, preoccupation with hurting yourself or death. Wow. Who gets it? Researchers aren't sure what causes the Carter delusion, but there are a few possible risk factors. Several studies indicated that the average age of people with Carter delusion is about 50. It can also occur in children and teenagers. People under the age of 25 with Carter delusion tend to also have bipolar depression. Women also seem to be more likely to develop the delusion. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, folks, this just gets just stranger and stranger. I often wonder, is it again because we just haven't figured it out. I went through and you start reading these cases, um, 2008, 1996, 2012, 2009. It's apparently much more common than we first realized. I, I, Leave me your comments and tell you, I, I feel so sorry. I, no, that's, that's not even, that's a great deal of empathy, sympathy for these people. This has got to be a living hell, folks. Um, I got more and more cases on this. I mean, I, I went through so many of this. So I want to talk about, as we get ready to wind this down, this story was a tremendous upbeat story. Um, it's over on uh, Fox News. You can get it at foxnews.com. Woman who died of cancer at 35 wrote about her life in her own obituary. Damn, it was good. 
If you had to write your own obit, what would you say? I wonder if we could do that as an assignment. Write your own obituary. What would you say? Well, this young woman, she died of cancer. She made the decision. Her name was uh, Bailey Matheson. She was diagnosed with cancer two years ago, and she decided to forego chemo chemotherapy and spend the rest of her time on earth enjoying what time she had left. She moved on and passed to the other side on April 5th. In her obituary, published April 9th, Matheson urged people to not take the small stuff so seriously and live a little. She thanked several people, including your parents, for letting me live the rest of my life the way I believed it should be. Wow. Such wisdom, such profoundness. Learn to live your life the way that you believe it should be. She goes on to write, uh, thanking the people in her life. She had just met uh, a new man, and uh, he apparently was one of the good ones, um, was with her the whole time. And her last words were this, uh, which I thought was so interesting. She said, for her part, Matheson, Matheson lived a fulfilling life. As she wrote in her obituary, 35 years may not seem long, but damn, it was good. Matheson, wherever you are, you, you are a hope. Now, I have actually reached out to this doctor, trying to get him on, uh, Dr. Sam Perina. Folks, this is remarkable um, new research. It says, when you die, you know you're dead because your brain keeps working. Uh, the, the story goes, we know when we are dead, when we die, because our brains keep working to make us aware of what's happening around us. <laughs> wow. Top medical experts have forever been at loggerheads over what happens when humans die. With anecdotal evidence of bright lights and flashes reported by people who have come back being the cause of much debate. However, a new study suggests your consciousness carries on functioning after your heart stops beating and your body fails, uh, movements have failed. This means you are essentially trapped inside your dead body with your brain still working, if only for a short time. Wow. Survivors of cardiac arrest were aware of what was going on around them while they were dead before being brought back to life, the study revealed. More surprising still, there is evidence to suggest the deceased may even hear themselves being pronounced dead by the doctor. Dr. Sam Perina is studying consciousness after death and examining cardiac arrest cases in Europe and the U.S. He says people in the first phase of death may still experience some form of consciousness. The expert venture that people who have survived cardiac arrest later accurately describe what was happening around them after their hearts stopped beating. He said, they'll describe watching doctors and nurses working. They'll describe having awareness of full conversations, of visual things that were going on that would otherwise not be known to them. Explaining when a patient is officially declared dead, he said, is all based on the moment when the heart stops. Technically speaking, that's when you get the time of death. His studies is examining what happens to the brain after a person goes through cardiac arrest and whether consciousness continues after death and for how long to improve the quality of resuscitation and prevent brain injuries while restarting the heart. 
So uh, I hope to have the good doctor on. His schedule is obviously full, but hey, I think that is just something else. You know, it's who, how many, and I'm dating myself on this. How many of you remember Vincent Price? You know, he was the actor uh, in the 50s and 60s, all the way into the 70s. Always played the horror movies, you know, always the bad guy. And, uh, but he played the character, he, he did the best Edgar Allan Poe. I really tell you, guy still creeps me out. Um, so he did one of his short vignettes of where he died. No, 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 I know what it was. He put his wife in there, he caught her cheating and um, apparently gave her, oh, um, karate, I think, uh, any one of the drugs that paralyzed her. Anyway, they buried her. And so the whole thing was, you know, she awoke inside that. And I often think when I hear these stories, I don't think I'm going to like that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just being candid here. I'm going, you know, I don't think I'm going to dig that. I mean, come on, man. You know, as I started this nearly 45 minutes ago, that birthing process sucks. I mean, there's no denying it. There, there's no nicety about it. There's no way of saying it's a pleasant experience. Like, oh, I'll tell you what, didn't feel a thing. Like hell, you didn't feel a thing. You know, you can't do it again. And now you've lived your life, live it the way you believe it should be lived. And now your time is there. And let's just say you did die of a heart attack. Most people do. Uh, if you don't know that, that's how most people die. You die of a heart attack. Uh, whether you've got cancer or any other disease, it's typically cardiac arrest that will take you down. And so now think about this. So here's a question for us free thinkers to think about this one. Would you rather be medicated in a hospice situation to where you're just out of it, like, you know, morphined and, you know, they, they, they've basically it's legal murder is what it is. Uh, but listen, I'm not complaining about it. Cancer sucks. It's painful. Disease sucks. It's painful. We don't like it. Our bodies don't like it. And I often wonder, well, all right, if I'm, you know, going out, you know, with phenyl or something, are you conscious at that point? I was in a coma for nearly nine days. I don't remember anything in my coma. I, I, I really don't. <laughs> well, thank you, Hadley. How are you? Um, I just don't remember. Um, but boy, I mean, the doctor is saying, the research is showing. I read in one report, they monitored electrical impulses in the brain of a dead man, in this case, for nearly 22 minutes. 22 freaking minutes? Now, I don't know if because that they were monitoring electrical impulses, and here's the, here's the question. Is consciousness in you and I attributed to the electrical impulses that are being generated in our brains? I mean, if you say no, then how do you define consciousness? How is consciousness prevailed? We know how neurons go for thoughts. Are you saying that there's something that supersedes the thought itself? And if consciousness can be attributed to an electrical impulse still in the synaptic pathways of the brain, what is that person experiencing? I don't know. I don't think I want to know. <laughs> I 
just telling you. I don't know. You know, I had source tell me that, you know, this was actually could have been Lilith, who knows? But I never forget when it happened. You know, the soul of one, the spirit of many. I don't know. It's a question we're going to continue to discuss here. This is one that's very much, well, every person, every person. It is the perfect thing that you could say covers all ages, all demographics, all races, greeds, religion, everything. Everybody got this in common. Okay. Tonight, we're going to be talking about this more because I can talk freer over on the Artist First Network. <laughs> it's what it does. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're all going to find out that answer. So uh, we're going to get into this a little bit more. You know, it, it's that whole aspect that everyone seeks about. I mean, you think about if we are filming paranormal instances where objects are being moved and filmed and there's no one there, no one, uh, you know, the great thing about this prison that we live in today, this technological prison, they're watching us everywhere. They really are. You have no freaking idea. Well, some of you do, but they are watching. Um, we're going to get more into this. How does AI play in all this? Is AI aware of spirits? Is AI aware of death? We'll get into that tonight. Uh, 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, 7 o'clock Mountain Time, artist.com. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to do a story. Uh, go over to the real Jimmy Roberts. Go over and check out his YouTube channel. Um, I've been a fan of his, uh, I like his work and I happen to think that he is spot on and folks, and I so miss Patrick where we could really start talking to the planets on this one. Cause I got some questions for Mars. Mars told us that it, there was a war there. Folks, I think we have it all wrong on the time. I don't think this was millions of years ago. I don't think that this was 10,000 years ago. I don't even think it was 1,000 years ago. I think that there was a nuclear war that wiped out all living life that we know of on Mars. And I contend, ladies and gentlemen, I'm reaching out to Laura Eisenhower on this as well. I think it's been very recent, maybe within the last thousand years. The question we have to ask ourselves, who did the exploding, who did the attacking, and where are they now? Join me tomorrow as we get into this. Um, I think that this is something we need to talk about. And I think Laura, uh, I am going to reach out to her and see, because she would probably have a very unique perspective on this. All right, folks, I'm going to let you go. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, much favor on you. Thank you all. I mean, we're all in this thing together. We really are. And, uh, you know, if I have these same thoughts, I know you do as well. I think we're getting closer to the answer. I really do. I think the young woman who wrote her own obituary, she knew. I think she got clarity at the end. She figured it out. I think that's why the great mystics, great magicians of our time, John D., many others I could just name off, they knew this. I think that's why they can re-manifest back here. The question really becomes, you know, if ghosts exist, if spirits are here, then the whole concept of heaven and hell is blown right out of hell. It's just blown out. 
You can't have a spirit haunting if you say that there is either or. You can't have it both way, baby. Uh, <laughs> so we appreciate it. Um, hey, uh, 420s coming up here in Colorado. And I know other states have it. So it's a big uh, tourist day here. And uh, so we'll be talking more about that tomorrow. And uh, things are changing, folks. Uh, I think that some of the things that are being filmed, uh, these large triangular ships, I think these other uh, I am anomalies uh, that we're seeing. Uh, we're going to get John Martin and I are still talking. We're looking to do something with Karen. I believe they're here, folks. I just tell you, stop and think about this. There's evidence that we know something happened on Mars. Something. And I contend it's not that long ago. I think it's probably very recent. And it's gotten me to thinking, again, folks, where did they go? Someone attacked someone. Are they still here? All right, folks, appreciate you. Favor to you. Thank you. Have a great day. Join me tonight if you can. If not, see you tomorrow. Hey, listen, love yourself. It's, in the end, it's really going to count a lot. Love yourself. Accept yourself, receive yourself, because in the end, it is about self, isn't it? All right, folks, be good. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. Bye.